some months ago, some uh, enterprising critic of Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmed uploaded an extract from one of Hazrat Saab's, uh, I don't know whether it's a book or article or speech or whatever it is, where Hazrat Saab <coughs> speaks about change of gender and uh, as is usual with uh, people who don't have uh, much knowledge about these things, he poked some uh, fun at it, he ridiculed it and so on and so forth. I gave some reply, I can't remember what reply it was. Um, <clears throat> but uh, it wasn't directly related to what Hadassar had uh, written. Recently, when uh, my wife and I visited Dubai, we went to a place called uh, Atlantis, which is a hotel named after a sunken city. And there they had uh, an aquarium. We didn't actually go into the aquarium, but um, I noticed outside that they had a great, like a billboard uh, to attract people to part with their hard-earned money and go in. And it said that they had on show in that aquarium a great groper and then they went on to say the quality of this fish is that it changes its gender. Female becomes a male. And uh, when I saw that, uh, I photographed the billboard because uh, I wanted to uh, remember the name of this fish. And when I uh, went back to our accommodation, I did some research and uh, part of that research I will read out to you this week and part I will read out next week. But before I do that, what I want to share with you is my amazement of the breadth of Hazrat Masih Imam's knowledge. I didn't know and that these things happen. Now why should I know? Well, <coughs> Adar Saab lived in a village which didn't even have electricity or roads or uh, uh, a train station. It still doesn't have uh, a train station, although it now has roads and electricity. He never went to school. He never studied modern sciences. The likelihood that I should know something like this is much greater, having access to internet and God knows uh, what else. And it also shows that even we are ignorant when it comes to answering some of the objections that are raised by <coughs> our opponents against uh, the promised Messiah. Anyway, this, uh, these extracts are from some zoology sites. This one says, in high school biology, we are taught that biological sex is a game of X and Y. Women have two X's and men have one of each X and Y. In recent decades though, scientists have learned that things might not be so clear cut. There are people whose biological sex cannot be easily determined because they are born with both genitals or because the female presents with an XY and the male presents with the XX. People with congenital abnormalities that leave them unable to be classified as male or female are considered, considered intersexual, a term 
which has come to replace the word herma, <coughs> hermaphrodite in humans. In the plant and animal world, though, these aren't the atypical abnormalities that they are in the human world. These species are evidence that there is more to biological sex than just genes and chromosomes. Sometimes all it takes is an environmental factor to alter your sex and your gender. There are two kinds of uh, hermaphrodites in the plant and the animal world, <coughs> simultaneous ones and sequential ones. Fish and gastropods make up the bulk of both types. Simultaneous ones have both male and female re reproductive parts of their uh, parts for their entire life and can mate with any other member of their species that they should find. I stop here and comment that when talking about the virgin birth of Jesus, Hazrat Sahib put this forward as a possibility that in rare cases, in human beings this can happen. That can be a huge reproductive advantage because it's easy to have a large number of children. Your mating options are doubled compared to humans. Sequential hermaphrodites are, uh, are born as one sex but change completely into the other sex during the course of their lives. When something is born as a male but becomes a female, this is called protandry, while prot protogeny refers to a female becoming a fake. Clownfish are one of the most prominent examples of sequential hermaphrodites. These fish live uh, with, the, uh, with an animal for most of their lives in a very hierarchical structure in which the sole female and the largest male do all the mating. When the female dies, the largest fish becomes female and she begins mating with the next male. Just as with simultaneous hermaphrodites, this mating strategy is advantage, uh, advantageous for reproduction, particularly since this fish never ventures very far from home. And then they go on to uh, say, uh, I'll skip some, and it says in, nine, in 2009, Yale researchers established that benefits of sex change far outweighed the biological cost of sex change, for while rewiring a human to become the other sex would be tricky. It's quite simple for fish, frogs, and plants. Now, this is not just anyone saying that. This is not just any website saying that. This is Yale University, one of the most prominent universities in, in the world. So I would say to our critics that perhaps before they start leaping about and saying how silly and how nonsensical, nonsensical this is that Mirza Ghulam Ahmed has written, perhaps they should do some research. <coughs> and I would say to Ahmadis that before they start cowering and saying, mm, why did the promised Messiah write this? You know, how am I going to defend this? Just log on to the internet and see what you can find. Next week, I'll carry on with the same theme to complete my answer to this person who ridiculed the promised Messiah for writing these things. But you notice the fact that here it was said recently scientists have found and the promised Messiah wrote this nearly 125 years ago. This is part two of what we were uh, talking about uh, last week and its heading in the paper is Natural Sex Change in Humans and it reads several medical conditions can result in a natural sex change in humans where the appearance at birth is somewhat mostly 
or completely of one sex. But changes over the course of a lifetime to being, uh, uh, <coughs> to being somewhat mostly or completely of the other sex. The overwhelming majority of natural sex changes are from a female appearance at birth to a male appearance after puberty due to either deficiency of 5-alpha RD2 or <coughs> a deficiency of 17-beta HSD3. A relative handful of male to female changes have been reported and the etiologies of these are not well understood. Genetic females, that is a human with two X chromosomes, with congenital adrenal hormones, cortisol and aldosterone. <clears throat> Without these hormones, the body produces more androgen, a type of male sex hormone. This causes male characteristics to appear early or inappropriately. Genetic males, that is human beings with one X and one Y chromosome, with androgen insensitivity syndrome is resistant to male hormone and androgen. As a result, the person has some or all of the physical char characteristics of a woman, despite having the genetic makeup of a man. The degree of sexual ambiguity varies widely in persons with incomplete AIS. Incomplete AIS can include other disorders. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, such as uh, Riefenstein's syndrome, which is associated with breast development in men. And in fact, Hildes Harvard specifically written here about uh, this last point, breast development in men, and that was what the uh, objection was uh, about. And I would request our members that when an objection is raised against Hazrat Masih to do research and they will find that invariably the objection arises from ignorance of the person who is criticizing what Hazrat Sahib has written and if there is inability on our part to be able to answer the objection. That is because we are also ignorant of many things of which Hazrat Sahib amazingly somehow managed to acquire 